Well, uh, Amy Collins asked us just a little bit ago that they were wanting to hold up an open house for the research department. And JD and I told her that we'd like, you know, to have a, a formal grand opening for the annex after the landscaping is put in. So maybe in a couple of months. Is that, gonna, is that going to happen this fall? This yeah, it's supposed, supposed to start the end of July, but it was supposed to dry on all those. Those are technically. No, we're not putting underground sprinklers in. Is that part of what we're doing? Oh, yeah. well, then they need to get it done this fall. Their plan was the end of July. Was that what he told the us? End of, the end of July? They're going to start the end of July. Yeah, end of July. Well, so you wanted to do this all together? Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. So, but you would want to have it. So that's that's what we told her. We hold off until everything is completed, and then we'll have a formal open house. So. Do we have anything at the present time, Nita? Auditors will be here at ten. Yeah, at ten. You can look at these before they cry. It's that bad. I um, thought they all price increased a couple of them up, but didn't go. Valuations down. Cash reserves are down. Okay, well, we'll review those. Anything at the moment? We'll recess. Brown. And it needs to be signed by commission. Nothing's changed. We did the budget. I did my budget, and we had to. Keep it within 5% of the budget. I do. So this is just formality of being. Rick is. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, on the 25th of August, we're going to have our family planning state audit. I need a job evaluation for that. So, how do you want to do that? We've had to do that before. Haven't we? Every other year, I want to make you do it every other year when she's showing up. Usually, the board chair just writes it up. Yeah, yeah I'm surely I'm not welcome. Go get a copy of that somewhere. We got our state grant funding. Um, some of the grants are based on like, uh, participation, and we got quite a bit more money for our family planning this year because our numbers are up instead of staying. But they took away some. But anyway, bottom line is we got about twenty-two hundred dollars more this year. And let's see. I guess that's that. So you have to have this evaluation by the 25th of August. 25th of August. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see if we can work something out. You want me to come back or how do you want to do that? It's like, well, you know, we can see what's next week. Yeah, it's like the first week.
or have a snack. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Hi, Forrest. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Don't know. <laughs> I'm bringing you my quarterly report. This is for the quarter ending as of June 30th. The first page there shows total total money that we have for the county, broken out into just liquid accounts and CDs. Not doing much in CDs because some of my savings account, my maker's account, are just about making as much as the CDs are right now, so that's not very active. Third page just shows in a pie chart liquid accounts to CDs. And then the last page is our big whopping interest earnings for the year. So far, $17,903. And so much difference between this year and last year. Interest rates have went up. Between this year and last year? Mm -hmm. Well, last year, see, I still had a lot of CDs locked in at a higher rate. Oh, okay. So now we're really, for another year or two until those really come up, it takes a while. To, yeah. But yeah, I had a lot more in CDs last year, and they pretty much all came due. Any questions? Um, I also wanted to ask you guys, um, next door, I noticed in the annex building, there's a cabinet with, it's like got two cabinets and it's got a countertop on it. Is anybody using that? Back in the storage room? Uh -huh. Well, right now, beside my sink, back in my vault, I have a little, just a metal um, storage cabinet I use, but I'd sure like to have a little counter top back there if I could. I think back in storage, too. Anything back, back there. Okay. I'd like to stick your name on it. I will. Okay. That'd be great. Your model job. When, when was the last time you saw it over there? Just oh. last week. Is it gone? I don't know. Oh. It was actually, uh, Randy and I were looking for tables to, to use out. for the computers, and so that's when I seen them. So it was Wednesday. And then there's some little square tables there's, back yeah, there. Yeah, there's lots of tables. Yeah, I see those too. Yeah, I know Steve was back there when I was around, so. <laughs> I might run it by him. Yeah. Okay, I'll run it by him. Yeah, you gotta get in front of Steve, by golly. <laughs> I'll get it. There's, a, there's a lazy Susan <laughs> back there. Yeah, and there's some other things too. And we got the two computers installed at the end of the hall. So then that's mainly just for our abstractors and our title people. So I, I really hope it works out good. So Carl donated a computer and I put a computer in there. So we each. Uh, Don't anything like a ring of camera. Um, it, we just put it on a simple table for right now, but maybe in the future we might look about getting a couple of little desk units, you know, little. You think we burn it out there? Yeah, probably. I mean, after the. It, if well, it works out. I'll gas thing. I'll, I'll research on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. If it works out, it, we'll just have to wait and see. That's why we just put it on a table for now, and then if people really start to use it, then I think we'll have to buy a nice little desk for them. So. Um, and also, I want to publicly thank Dawn Keenan for helping in our office when we had a leak up above from the air conditioning unit. Um, he really, with it, us not having a janitor. He really does kick in and help around here a lot, so you guys might want to let him add a boy. Yeah, give him an add a boy. <laughs> and 
I would like to call for an executive session. Executive session for um, can you do for personnel policy? So you can handle four people. We've already had three apply. <laughs> we haven't had them apply. They're they're yeah, inquiring. Inquire, I mean, yeah. I yeah. had one. He, yeah, called you and then called me. So um, two of them are, I think are actively looking to buy houses in the area and are looking at places so if, in Stafford if you County. Fill this if you get four people the first year then we can't add any more. You, you could, but it is subject to um, availability of funds. Yeah. Essentially, we're kind of saying we'll we'll, we'll make six thousand, you know, what, available. But after that, it's subject to availability. It wouldn't even have to. The way they've written it, it doesn't have to come from county. The county has to authorize it. Has, has to authorize participation in the program from the county's perspective. But as far as the payment goes, it doesn't have to come from the county. If we had a charitable foundation that wanted to designate funds, that's an eligible. Local, you know, um, source. I, it can basically come from anywhere. But um, I think my understanding too of how this is working statewide, the state has allocated 1.3 million, I think, for this in the coming year. And their way of allocating it among the counties is that as the counties develop or um, approve their resolutions with the amount, now we of that 1.3 million, we know we're going to get. Four people authorized out of that. And so what percentage of counties did you have? I said questions that have decided to go ahead and you know, talk about practically didn't they? I think the red paper today. There was an article in the paper. Huh? I don't know. Uh, Kingman, man. Kingman. I was reading yeah. it. was the first one. They were the, they yeah. made a big deal out of being the first one. But these are the 50 counties that are qualified under the ROZ. Right. It's the counties that qualify. But right, right. It's only. There was 50 of the qualified. Out of the 100 counties, that's one counties, there's 50 of them qualified. Right. And it was due to Carolyn's efforts to get Stafford included because we were, what, two towns? Right, right on the borderline. We were right on the borderline. We were like 22 people short of automatically qualifying. And they, in the end, we weren't the only county that they added on, but they added this on. You know, it'll be. I think it's worth giving a try to see if this portion of it helps the efforts too. But I think there may be some advantages, even aside from the student loan portion. For example, um, the governor has 
has, um, I got a we'll call last week, he's interested in relocating some um, state employees from Topeka to rural opportunity zones whose functions don't require them to be in Topeka. So it's only rural opportunity zones that they're contacting about this, but they were wanting to know what kind of building space we have available and what the cost would be, and they're interested in relocating groups of 10 to 75 people to these counties. And um, Tell them we have a brand new building with lots of room. <laughs> I gave them information on the Duck Walls building and, um, and gathering information on the Maxville Nursing Home building. That would be pretty exciting. So, um, I don't know, I mean, it, I don't know if it's going to be, it's very, very early stages of that yeah, and everything, but we wouldn't even be having the opportunity to provide information if we hadn't been designated a real opportunity. So, so mm -hmm. I hope there's some other. Do we need a motion, a motion on this right now? Well, I, you know, I don't see any reason not to at this point. Well, it's coming out of your budget. So my, concerns, my concerns you basically addressed. And, and uh, other than that, it's sure worth a shot, I think. And the committee, are they are they all in favor of this, your committee? Yeah, we've talked about it. I think they're supportive of it. They think it would be beneficial to them. Yeah. I move we accept resolution number 2011-12 for the acceptance of the uh, student or authorizing the participation in the student loan repayment program for staff of county. I second motion. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carried. And you guys limited this amount here, you're saying? Yeah, this is to be clear too, this is for the 2012 year. We, we would come back each year and authorize whatever you know, payment we want or the motion to come That's here. Sure. Okay. I think it has to be published too. But you're opting into the program for the duration of the five year. But it's subject to appropriations, I think. And yeah, each, it's kind of each year. You don't have to appropriate any money, but you're committed to be in it, so it's kind of like a typical government. So, in reality, you can get out of it if you have any yeah, money. Yeah. Okay, that's one thing I had for. Since you're both here, I'd like to discuss, you know, the, night, the little discussion we had last week when I went to your office. Blake came in here kind of aware of but I went and talked to Carolyn about Golden Belts, the Golden Belt Highway, as we can call it. <laughs> I wrote Pursu a pursuing the, pursuing getting a, a road asphalt into the highway. Carolyn was like, "Isn't that Phil's job?" <laughs> so I, you're both here. Well, I, give, I give your name, listen. Roger, because I said you was on the township board and your wife is down, so I said the township issue. So go ahead and contact the township up there. It is a township issue. The township can't do anything. You know that their funds are they're so limited. It's. It, it's something that you know. I think we need to discuss. I think I hope that there are some options available. At least explore them. I'm, I am not in favor of levying taxes to the, on the whole county to support this, but I'm hoping that there's some things that we can do. But it's a huge problem, and it's way beyond the township's ability to do it. Way, way beyond. I understand that. And uh, it's not going to go away. So. I, my, you know, my first question is where does the responsibility fall and what I'd like to see is you two working together because I think you probably know things that can help Carolyn and obviously she can help you when it comes to Topeka and stuff. But, but what we're trying to do is find funds, grants, whatever, from state and federal levels that can help us build this road. Clayton has used for an example they blacktop the road going into the poultry farm in, in, by lines, by chase. And the county's responsibility in the end just was basically the dirt work, you know, the grading and, and building the road. And it was like an 80 20 split or something like that. Was. And the county's responsibility was achieved without any tax money, just doing what we can do with the. They, use, they use their own forces for, for the work. Exactly. 
my else some sense sometimes a lot they won't let you do that sometimes they will sometimes they won't it, it, it just depends I understand. They, and the first thing I guess you really need to do is get a preliminary estimate from an engineer of what it's going to take mm -hmm. because there's going to have to be a real good base underneath that road. Are you familiar with the one in Chase County? Is it Chase County? No. no it's not. It's Rice. Chase. It's, it's Rice. Rice. County. The Rice. Um, do you know what program they used or what? No, I can call Dennis and get some information. I know the road supervisor up there. I can call and talk to him. They talked about one time changing the road to the north side. It, 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 and, uh, got that half mile. Uh, half, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that was Carl's idea. Actually. And uh, they talked, they come up in the old book up to and we discussed it. And they was going to do the work and see if they could find some. But well, they those guys, when those guys and they didn't do anything with it. Came in, well, Merlin put a stop to that. But Merlin's not in charge anymore. The, two guys, the guys that came in and introduced themselves, I think, would be more favorable to this suggestion. But the township board of that. And they're, they're even willing to go so far as to close the road to the south, which would, which would mean the Golden Belt wouldn't lose any property, and even if they had to move their pivot point 60 feet to maintain their, you know, their pivots. They'd be willing to do this. Uh, the, the road doesn't actually access anybody directly, you know, as far as cut somebody off from their home or something like that. So it would be feasible. So there's... There's compromises that can happen. We just got to get the ball rolling and see what can happen. So. Well, you know, you know the, the KDOT infrastructure better than I do. It would be helpful to me if you knew, if, uh, if you were able to do some of the background on like what programs this might qualify for. You know, I can help put together the, the application, but just like you do with the federal headlines program application before. You know those people. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you know, the road supervisor. You, he, he, yeah. You know, well, I'm not proud of getting I can't remember what proud county did down there on that one for the, the, ethanol, plant. the ethanol plant. But, it, I mean, there was, I think it's two miles stretching through there. But I, I can call both those guys get some information. But it, those, those, those weren't cheap roads. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Those weren't cheap roads. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. 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 And it may not be something we can do, but, but I'd like to at least explore the Yeah, and it's not a cheap road because they're now they're using it for northbound 281 detour. Is that the one they're using, or are they using the one south of there? They're using the, the one that goes by the ethanol plant. Well, then, the, usually when they do that, though, they have to they have to work in agreement with the county. Yeah. Because, because that's but what I'm saying because is, yeah. it's a better road than yeah. what the one is a mile south. A mile south. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do think that there's a possibility that we could just make a straight run into the feed lot, which cuts the cost by a third, eliminates a corner, which can save some serious money and maintenance issues and all that stuff. But, and that's that's what I'd be in favor of. And, and even, like I said, even the townships want to work with us. But we're not going to offer to close the road unless it's something that's a deal breaker. That's getting ahead of myself. Too. Yeah, because you've got all sorts of issues to work out. Way, there. way, yeah. Oh, okay, who's, who's going to do the maintenance? And, you know, who's going to pile the snow? And it's just, yeah. Exactly. There's quite a minefield of issues there to take care of. That's why we want to get started on it. We need to the best people to get going. Where? <laughs> yes, they're not on this side of the table. <laughs> so if, if, if it's okay with you guys that we pursue that, I, I, I would like to get some ideas. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll give the guys a call and find out. Okay. Okay. Just another thing to add on your plan. Need to get something finished. <laughs> Don't get busy. What have you been doing? You've had a what, a whole month here? <laughs> okay. Thanks. I just come up to let you know until we get some sort of break in this weather, we're going to change our hours down here from where we're from six to two. 
do it now. We're going to change our hours and we're going to move from six to two. I mean, this is basically some information for you. I mean, it, it gets equipment out of so much heat. I mean, if you've been down and out, you've seen tires laying all over the road. I mean, so, <laughs> and it's, it's been pretty hard to. It's, you know, uh, just trying to get the guys out of the heat. I mean, we don't have too many of them in the heat, but we do have two or three. And, My dad wanted me to tell you it's the highway south of Maxwell. You can go 101 now, and he's appreciative. <laughs> he has on. not tried it yet, but he knows he can. It's the smoothest road in the county, and he loves that. Oh, they did, because I was on <coughs> yesterday. It was very nice. He wanted me to tell you that. Okay, so I'm going to tell Jeff that, too. <laughs> There's My dad doesn't go there's ahead. Some, there's some added right there. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. We can get this he, road built no time. He puddles time. into town every day to the coffee shop. I don't think he's going ahead. I've seen her dad drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just knew Phil would appreciate that, I think. He's, he, he, he's been a farmer for a long time. <laughs> well, you've got to farm both sides of the road. It's hard to go fast and do that. Yeah. Well, that's right. So, you guys don't have anything that's all I have. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, we're moving along our building. This is kind of an overview of where we're at. And uh, down at the bottom is a. Uh, I'd like to actually. I'd like to request in a little request. Uh, we, we got bids from the three different companies there. You see in the, uh, the gray highlighted area, area Abbott Carpet, KNR Home Improvement, and Home Lumber. Um, over to the right is, is actual the product, the carpet tile. We just got two bids for that. Um, I could probably get a better bid if I went to Wichita, but that's a pretty good bid from Abbey Carpet. Did you, did you bid Cross Street? That does White still sell carpet over there? Or not? I don't know. I think he does. Who's that? Quite oh, I didn't know that. I don't know if he does. Oh, it doesn't. I don't say about there like you are. The the problem, even like if you see home lumber, the reason for that big difference is Abbey Carpet has some in stock that they already have, you know, left over from another order, and that's why they can sell it so much um, less than home lumber. If we had to order straight, you know, just a straight new bid, it would be closer to that 3200 So, and, and that's kind of what places like Jabara's do. They buy out stock that's, you know, that's already in. So, um, that's a pretty good bid, I think, on the carpet, a very good bid. And then the labor, uh, we, we don't know who Abbey Carpet uses for that, but it's somebody that they have confidence in. And k &R Home Improvement is from here in St. John. I am not sure who that is. I, I, I met the gentleman. I should remember him. I, I don't. I mean, he sell carpet and stuff. Okay. Uh, I don't think he doesn't sell carpet. He just that's just labor. Installs. Oh, I see labor. Okay. That's just labor. Kind of part of backwards carpet should have been listed first. But, um, if it was closer, I'd probably make a recommendation that we stay local, but that's a little over $200, which is uh, more than. 10% more. So I'd, I'd make a request that we, um, uh, that you give me authorization to go with Abbey Carpet for both the, uh, the the product, the boring product, and the labor. Can you, uh, when we do, this is a procedure question, but when we have bids like this, we have, we have a local guy, can you? Contact him and say, hey, this is the bid from somebody else. I'm not a bid's a bid. No, no, it's 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 quite, that'd be quite fair to the other guy. It's, 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 it's not an auction, it's a bid. Yeah. Right, okay. Right. It'd just be nice to let somebody local do it. I, I agree. It just, and if it was closer, I'd, I'd go to the recommend we go that direction. But it's, Greater than 10% more. 
and Abby is out of out of Great Bend. Great Bend. so they don't have to order it. That's correct. <clears throat> okay, well, I guess we'll make a motion to go ahead and authorize. <coughs> uh, Andy Carpet for the, uh, what's the total now? That is the uh, 33 40 21 is the installation department in the power with the MS building. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I'll say aye. Motion carried. Okay, so the completion date on this is rapidly approaching. It's getting closer. <laughs> We're moving along. He's got it all taped out. The windows are on the way. And, uh, so we're, we're moving along. Um, I hate to predict, but I'd probably predict wrong. I, uh, I sent Larry a, a thank you on behalf of us. Uh, he helped us here about a week and, week, week and a half ago with uh, one of our trucks. The, uh, I don't know where we got that one done as far as uh, kind of... Uh, the work done on whether it even came from the forestry like that, but uh, whatever, it didn't hold up. And the, the bolts that held down the, the back end to the bed to the frame uh, sheared off when they came out of uh, came out of the field. And uh, uh, actually, Sean Meshner helped us a, a bunch too because he uh, he took it over to his shop and did some work on it. But Larry stopped his bail in operation and came over and, and helped. Uh, Lift the lift thing up and put it back in position so we could at least get it back to the, the fire station, which I thought was awfully uh, nice of him to stop his work and come over and bail us out. So I, I went ahead and included that in a, in a thank you card to him, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. And then I just kind of wanted to uh, give you kind of a, an update of. Actually, not an update, but uh, we had three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back calls with EMS, and that's a pretty good uh, thing to be able to, you know, we, we kind of talk at times, you know, whether um, whether we should be running three units um, or small small department, but we do have a fairly long response time from uh, Pratt or Martin County, and we haven't had to do that since I've been here, but I'm sure we have had to do that in the past, and there's nothing wrong with having to do that occasionally, but uh, um, it kind of highlights the, the fact that you know, every once in a while we will use all three of them, and, and we were able to do that. And, uh, so that was that. Um, the next thing I had, Katie had been with me about, uh, about parking in front of the annex, and uh, so I visited with the city, and they said I needed to, to do a formal request, so I, I would, hadn't got a, I'm going to visit with the police chief, but I hadn't been able to catch him yet, but uh, I wanted to write it up uh, so it was kind of somewhat in, uh, that all three of you would kind of know how I presented it um, and be in agreement for that to be. I had not dropped this off yet because I wanted to make sure that that was kind of how you wanted me to. Uh, Is that what we kind of talked about was have just either the handicap or in the drop off place for the rest of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the about the only opposition that I can see that might be presented from the city standpoint would be that um, I know a lot of the people that frequent the Wood Center at lunchtime have noticed that they tend to park right there, a few of them. That's about all there is room for is a few. It's a couple of parking spots. It, it doesn't cause us problems when we don't have anything going on in the annex, but if we had something going on in the annex, it, it, it would. So, uh, I think there's other options from the park. And it's only probably, about the only thing you're losing as far as uh, people parking is about two stalls. Um, we got to have, 
dump this in here where this curb's cut up, have that just a drop off area, right? Right. <clears throat> Is there enough room for a one? Of course, we got across the street, we got the handicap stall across the street over there. I was thinking the one handicap parking would be nice. Heard out the end by the post of Well, we talked about that, but if you have one handicap spot and you've got another hand, you know, person trying to pull up to offload or you know, unload a handicap person. How, I mean, how would right, right from the doorway, you don't have to park right there. That's why I see the problem. Have a ramp right. It'd, it'd, it'd be nice for one handicapped parking if that's all you had with one handicapped person. But if you have ten handicapped have people, like Nita's right saying, yeah. then it causes it's it causes some safety was, concerns yeah. because if you if you pull right up there and you and you and you offload it, I suppose you can you can pull over there and offload it this other one because you have two two points. It's it's whatever your pleasure. And, and so you want to leave the front front area right there in front of the doors on the way people get parked in front of that. Yeah, because I I think that's people walk out there. Most people aren't going to walk out that way. They're just going to walk they're straight straight across. So then they're walking. Of course, we want a loading and unloading area, right? For I would think, so. think well, that's why that's why the curb design for loading and unloading. If people that have access, they got make walk back long enough or something pull in there, and they have they have. You know, like a, a rear end unloading deal or something along the front van type thing to unload. We have a fairly um, old, uh, overage community, and I, I think you know the chances of having quite a few people that uh, maybe they aren't considered handicapped, maybe they don't want to be considered handicapped, but it wouldn't be bad for for somebody to be able to pick them up there and not have to walk because our our parking lots do have you know a, a little bit of distance, uh, especially if there's to park around back. So I, I think the idea of just leaving the front open makes logical sense. That no more parking stalls. That you're, it's not like you're losing eight parking stalls. You're losing one or two, and it'd be more logical just to eliminate the parking in that way. It's, it's just a drop off pickup. I tend to agree. There's a lot of places you can go, uh, shopping centers and stuff. You know, they have handicapped parking and. Offside. They've got to go walk so, and the rest of them are fire lines. As you know, I didn't put how to market because I'm not a parking expert. I would probably park it. I'd probably market it if, without knowing much about that. Uh, say red, and that way it's 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 for a fire lane. It's not a parking spot. You can pull you still let people off, off, but uh, but the the city folks will know what what color it needs to be. We want them to be able to, to, to park there <coughs> and unload or pick up somebody, but not just stay there. Yeah, well, but the, where we got that curb cut, I want to make sure they make that handicap parking there for room there for people loading and unloading. Right. Uh, you know, that area's right there on this west end right there. That's what it's designed for. Are we yeah, I'm there? not sure what color you do that in. Blue, yeah. But blue, I think, allows them to actually to park there. there. Yeah, blue, I think, actually allows them to park there. So I think it has to be red. It's a fire lane, so they can drop off there, but the they Catholic can't stay there. I don't think it's even painted out there at the Catholic Church. They have a sign that says something about unloading. Something. That's why I thought maybe red might, you know. I don't know what it is. It's for emergency access. And, and I, I mean, I... I I don't know. It'd be a long sign if we have emergency access, fire lane, loading, and unloading. <laughs> well, I don't. Want, I don't think we really want any sign. Anything but parking. No sign. <laughs> well, just down to the just for paint. That's what I was trying to yeah. trying to keep it clean, the front of the building clean, so you don't have any signs. You just have the curbing. That's why. Making a fire lane. That way, you can't you can't stay there, but you can. You can load oh, you do need fire lane for sure. I mean, in case you have someone you don't have have mercy in there, you, you got to have back to get in there. So. If you see most of the bigger buildings, the, the the big box buildings, I mean, right in front of the building, don't let people park right in front of the building. Yeah. I mean, that's where people are coming out and coming in. Oh, okay. Uh, if I could have uh, ten minutes, uh, doesn't about. Executive. Non elected. Non elected. 
Executive session turned on late today. Personnel. I'm not the only one. Any motion to executive session for not like personnel for 10 minutes? I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. We go into the executive session for 10 minutes. All in favor say aye. Resign. 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 Yeah, that has occurred to me. It's occurred to me on a daily basis lately. All right, okay. Ron, we'll go into session. And I don't think there's anything else that we have on the agenda that we need to cover. So we will adjourn.